and welcome to today's lesson focus on Aeschylus episode 2 speaking and reading by the end of this lesson you will have good understanding of when to use a clause and how to formulate a clause at the same time you will learn the ways of solving the problems Right then, when you get ready, we can begin. Okay, student. Conditional clauses or if clauses are used to state the dependence of one circumstance or sets of circumstances on another. This is a probably the most difficult areas of the grammar the difficulty arises from the fact that the forms of the verbs that is used to express the event and the event expressed are the correspondences. Now, let us see briefly a types of conditional clauses or if clauses. So in English, there are three types of conditional clauses. The first condition we say conditional type one. It's also called it probable or likely or possible condition. In this clause, the verb in the if clause is the present tense. And the verb in the main clause is in the simple future tense. So let us take one example. For instance, if I know her address, I will call her. We use it to express a real situation or a situation likely <clears throat> to happen in the future time being. The sentence above is therefore paraphrased as or what condition can we have the hard day? Condition can go back. Type one palada. I'm a work of my Probably. I'm a likely. I'm a possible condition is palada. Wow, sort of girl. Mark and Kalino. Mark if close code. Mark will be a cat and present tense. I'm a way to go. I got on the web group. The main close code. No, I got on simple future tense. I got on him to Salaham Piri. If I know her address, I will call her. If I know her address was symbol uh, present what present it is, I will call her now main clause key or her future. Hadaba possible situation is to express a real situation. Sentence can, a I may know her address and then I can call her. condition is also known as improbable or unlikely or unreal condition. In this clause, the verb in the, in the if clause is the past tense, whereas the verb in the main clause is a conditional tense. For instance, if I knew her address, 
I would call him. Look, if I knew her, and it is, I would call him. So, in this context, we use it to express imaginary situation in the present. The above sentence therefore means, I don't know her address, and then I can't call her. The speaker thinks that it is unlikely that he or she calls her. Similarly, we also use it to express advice. For instance, if I were you, I would always call my mother, means I am not you, and I don't call her, or you ought to call your mother. So, what I say is that the condition is that it is not the answer to the question. Let us proceed to the third condition which is called impossible. It is impossible. Rejected or unfulfilled condition. The verb in the if clause is in the past perfect tense and the verb in the main clause is in the perfect conditional tense. For instance, if I had known her address, I would have called her. Here it's possible that the condition cannot be fulfilled because the sentence refers to the past condition. The sentence such as the above one can be paraphrased as I didn't know her address and therefore I couldn't call her. The conditional clauses can be introduced by any one of the following signals. For instance, if, assume that, as long as, even if, in condition that, so long as, suppose then, provided that, unless if, Marka, Jim Ledahan, I had kept below the Amadu Adik Sankarta, I know Korko Hesni. When there is should, where, or had, in the if clause, the subject and the auxiliary verb can be inverted, and the if is omitted. Muhammad Amr Markada Dixon is a should, I'm aware, or had, or Kalam Markada Dixon is a if clause, can I get you to weigh on? The subject, I'm an auxiliary verb, can be inverted. And the if clause, can I mark what? Karebi Karta, Hadal Kagi. To silence or Kadan, no, if you should change your mind, just call us. Mark up. تو سال هن انکار کردم نه مکانی نو ادیکسر نه سیدنی نه کار کوه حس نی اینو کتی گی نه اما آمیت آن سمت هن نیف کلاسی شود یو چینج یور مایند جست کال اس ایانو بدلی کر را اف ای ویر یو ای وود کت داون سموکینگ سو دیسکسینگ دا پرولم داس ول دیسکسینگ دا پرولم وی می تاک ابوت دا بریس پرولم you can introduce different points by using the following expressions. For instance, the trouble is blah blah, or the problem is the awful or worse trouble, or thing is, or you may can say that, don't forget that in a case like this. In a situation like this, in this sort of situation, وقتمیه ها انکه حالا اینا لباتوین که اما این رو خب نه اینو لباتوین صاحب دل قلم اکسپریشنیس که اما این ریاضا دادیکسنی سید کب لابی سو حکم میده The trouble is this و ریاضا نه ناس کو حس نی ای که میت که یهیم The trouble is اما the problem is ریاضا نه اینو ناس کو حس نی بیاد کب لابی سه So so student now let us see what is paragraph, what is a paragraph. Paragraph is comes from the Greek word, which is paragraphos, which means to write beside or written beside. It's a self-contained unit 
of a discourse. In writing Dell with a particular point or idea, paragraphs consist of one or more sentences. Paragraphs are the building block of the paragraph. In reality, though the unit and the coherence of the idea among the sentences is constitutes a paragraph, paragraph is defined as a group of sentences or a single sentences which forms a unit or that forms a unit. Paragraph, paragraph was area or array. I'm a hover from a junior to make a center area of Mark I or run as you madam. I'm a lot of a common Adam like in her code of the eye one idea Mark Lee I'm a hello from a cool a man the sentence is what constitutes a paragraph. So ultimately a paragraph is a sentence or a group of sentences that support one main idea. In this section, we will refer to the main idea as the controlling idea because it is a control. What happened in the rest of the paragraph? Writing a paragraph may be the most difficult task for some of students, but it's surely it is not impossible with proper guidance and the knowledge and knowledgeable tips. Anyone can write a paragraph that has a perfect introduction, captivated and a detail is in the middle and a remarkable closing sentences that would leave lasting impressions on the readers. So when we come to the structures of the paragraph, a paragraph is a unit of a text that develops one main idea or topic in a specific detail. Paragraph has a beginning, middle, and the end. So the beginning of the topic sentences forecasts what the paragraph is going to be out. The middle level of this, the idea in detail by giving specific support for it. And the conclusion emphasizes the insight you have arrived at. In many languages, the fundamental unit of the composition is a paragraph. So, paragraph consists of the several sentences that are grouped together. These groups of sentences together discuss one main subject. In many formal academic languages, paragraph of three principal parts. These are the topic sentence, body sentence, and the conclusion sentence. The topic sentence contains the main idea, as the controlling idea, because it controls what happened in the rest of the paragraph. The topic sentence can be placed at the beginning or the middle or the end. And both at the beginning and at the end of the paragraph. So, uh, when we come to the characteristics or quality of the effective paragraph, the first or the main parts or the main thing that paragraph needs to have is a unit. The entire paragraph should concern itself with the signal focus. If it begins with one focus or major point of discussion, it should not end with another or wonder with the different ideas. In short, in the language of writing, the paragraph is said to be un unified if it is contained if it contain not a relevant or detailed idea that support the topic sentences. Secondly, the second characteristics of the paragraph is called coherent. Coherent shows the logical relationship of thoughts or ideas in a paragraph. Secondly, 
the origin, organization of the event, objects, and situations in a paragraph. In other words, there should be cohesion while organizing the events, objects, and situations in a paragraph using appropriate chronological, spatial, and emphatic orders. Thirdly, unbroken continuity of thoughts or idea in a paragraph. In other words, all supporting detail in a paragraph must cohere. That means must stick together. Must stick together. This quality is achieved when paragraph develops a single central idea that is contained in the topic. The thirdly, transition between ideas. This is another characteristic of the paragraph. The most convincing idea in the world expressed in the most beautiful sentences will move no one unless those ideas are properly connected. Unless readers can move easily from one thought to another, they will surely find something else to read or turn on the television. Providing a transition between the idea is largely a matter of attitude. You must never assume that your readers know why you know. In fact, it is a good to assume not only that your readers need all the information that you have and need to know how you arrive at the point you are at, but also that they are not quite as quiet as you are. And <clears throat> you might be able to leap from one side, from one side of this room to the other. Believe that your readers need some stepping stones and be sure to bless them in a readily accessible and the visible spots. There are four basic mechanical considerations in providing a transitional between the ideas. Using transitional expressions, repeating keywords and phrases, using pronouns, refers, reference, and using parallel forms. And the first one is using transitional tags. What is transitional tags? Transitional tags run the gamut from the most simple, the little conjugations like n, but, nor, for, yet, or, and sometimes. So, two more complex signals that ideas are somehow connected to the conjugations conjective adverbs and transitional expressions such as however, moreover, nevertheless, on the other hand, and the use of a little conjugation is especially and and but comes naturally for the most writers. However, the question whether one can begin a sentence with a small conjugation often arises. In a, isn't the conjugate conjugation at the beginning of the sentence a sign that the sentences should have been connected to the prior sentence? Well, sometimes yes. But often the initial conjugation is call attention to the sentences in an effective way. And that's just why you won't overuse it. Beginning a sentence with conjugation can be distracting, but the device can add refreshing dash to, the, to a sentence and they speed the narrative flows of your text. Restrictions against the beginning sentences with an or but are based on the shaky grammatical foundations. Some of the most influential writers in the language have been happily ignoring such restrictions for centuries. For instance, in addition, to add something 
we use this again also n and then besides equally important finally first further furthermore in addition in the first place last moreover next second still and the third. when we wanted to compare our idea we use comparison and there are also some transitions for comparison like also in the same way likewise similar and when we come to the concession concession granted naturally of course and the last is contrast how we contrast ideas although and yet at the same time but at the same time despite that even though even though for all that however in contrast and in spite of an state and so and we need to have some emphasize emphasizing transitions like certainly indeed in fact of course an exemplification or illustration where we wanted to give illustration after all as an illustration even for example for instance in conclusion in need in fact all in all and when we come to the summarization we use such transitions all in all all together as has been said finally in brief in conclusion in other word in particular in short and simple term and so time sequence we do have in paragraph we need to have a time sequence for instance after a while after word and then as long as at last at that time before beside earlier eventually finally formerly furthermore in addition in the first place in the past in the last and that's all for what we call the transitional for time for summary and for all and the fifth one is called the pronoun reference pronoun reference we mean that pronouns quite naturally connect idea because pronoun almost always refer the reader is to something earlier in the text i cannot say that this is truly because without causing the reader to consider what this could mean there's the pronoun causes the reader to sum up quickly and subconsciously what was said before or before going on to the because part of my reasons we should hardly need to add however that it must always be perfectly clear what a pronoun refers to if we may read cannot instantly know what this is then my sentences is ambiguous and misleading and also do not rely on unclear pronoun references to avoid res responsibility they say that and now student i hope you get a well so now it is time to do some activities so read the following short text as we have seen in paragraph and the characteristics read the following short text and complete it by filling the blank with any of the transition markers given in the box below
Welcome back, students. I hope that you haven't had trouble with answering these activities. And I hope that you did well as soon. So, okay, now let us work together. For the first question, a uh, paragraph needs time sequence. So to do that, you have to be clear with the markers of times. So first, it becomes the first. And then the second equation or the second dash becomes next. Third, before, and the fourth is when, fifth, or the final is finally, we say final. If you did so, it is great. So, students, until next, have a nice study and have a nice time.